I, I kind of take every moment as kind of life lessons and, and learnings, right? Back in the day when I joined, I, I was employee number 10 maybe of 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 emphasis in australia right yep. there's the the art of storytelling there's the art of narrative there's the art of stakeholder engagement so has there been a moment in your career where you've received sort of significant feedback that you can think of that's really shaped you a uh, person that was one of the guys that i used to work with is, i really can't i really can't deal with your emails and then you start to piece other parts of your life together and it wasn't until that stage that I wasn't aware that I, I've got ADHD. But, but how that shaped me is, is uh, I guess that's my kind of like my superpower. It's, it's, it's shaped me by, by giving me realization. If you're hungry, if you're curious, I, I, I'll give you every opportunity in the world. Gaps means opportunity. Babu Krishnamurthy, a highly experienced technology leader, a self-described digital transformation evangelist, connector of dots, purple person, and coffee drinker. Babu has had a career spanning more than 20 years working for Accenture, Infosys, ANZ, Vic Roads, and more recently at Oricam. Babu spent almost 15 years as a professional contractor, and in today's show, talks about how he built a career through finding opportunity in the gaps. Babu also shared his experience of discovering his superpower in ADHD. This tale is an honest and frank account of an incredible career journey. So, uh, Babu, welcome to Tales from Tech Titans. Thank you for having me. Um, I've been researching your career story, uh, and I'm fascinated today to learn, you know, how it's all played out and the lessons sort of along the way. Um, but my first question is probably a little bit left field. Okay. Uh, something that I spotted on your LinkedIn profile, you described yourself as a, a connector of dots. Yes. A, a drinker of coffee or a coffee drinker. That's right. Uh, and a purple person. That's right. Um, so my first question: What, what should go do coffee order? Uh, I'm I'm simple. I'm I'm a latte guy. Yeah. So I, nothing too complex, uh, but it does need to be extra hot. Extra hot. Extra hot. Yeah. There you go. It, it, it keeps me going for a little bit longer. Yeah. The- <laughs> and, and don't be surprised if I've got like two or three in in, in a day at least. You love your caffeine. I love my caffeine. Yeah. <laughs> right. How about purple person? What, what what does that mean? I've never come across that before. Yeah. So p- purple person is kind of the mi- mixture of um, no, knowing knowing the knowing the technology, knowing the IT, but knowing yeah. the business as well, and and kind uh, of blend blend blending the both. I, I guess. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. It's, where, where does that come from? Not- yeah. I, I, I've 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 heard it uh, along the traps uh, uh, in a number of different places, and I think there's a is there's almost this you know, definition of of the kind of um, people that. That, that are able to um, bring ideas together. And, and, yeah. and so for me, it resonated a fair bit. So yep. yeah, I, I, I do believe that, you know, what I do bring is this unique blend of, of business and technology kind of knowledge. So, yeah, okay. Yeah, yeah, I like that. No, I yeah. like that phrase. I think uh, so it caught my eye on the top and I thought, right, I'm going to ask him. I'm going to ask him Good what question. that means. Um, so you're, when, I, when I looked at your career, it, uh, I guess the LinkedIn story starts with the University of Adelaide. Yes. Uh, and a degree there in uh, computer science engineering. Yes. Um, what happened before? What, what was life kind of before university for you? Yeah, uh, it, was, it was a lot of traveling um, yeah. uh, through you know, early parts of, of life. It's just through family, right? And we, we yeah. migrated to Australia when I was three years old uh, to, to Newcastle. Um, it was several years of, of different schools um, yeah. that, I, that, that, that I went to in Newcastle then Again, migrated um, as a family to um, to, to UK. Yep. Uh, spent some time in in London, um, and, and then further in into Sydney. So I spent a fair bit of time in, in di- various different schools, you know, finding new friends and making new friends over the years. And then eventually, you know, my father kind of found a job and, and settled down into into Adelaide. And really, from about high school onwards, um, yeah, you know, Adelaide Adelaide became home. Um, and then Adelaide Uni was 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 the default place that you, that you'd go to if, if you were in Adelaide. So yeah, great. Yeah, and that's um, it's not easy moving around like that as a kid. Uh, it it's not, but I I I think it kind of worked for my personality type as yeah. a kid, and and I guess over the years I, I think you know as I as I reflect back, it, it, it has kind of helped me. I I, I find it um, easy to kind of make friends and yeah. and. and yeah, kind of adapt to new situations uh, a little bit easier. Um, yep. Yeah, and, and I guess when, as as a youngster, I, I was a little bit more manu- malleable and enjoyed just kind of you know finding new people and hanging out with them. So yeah. yeah, look, I think you're right. I think when when you move around in that way, it, it kind of creates this pro-social behaviour. Yeah, you know, you're very good at making connections and finding common ground very quickly. Correct. Yeah, uh, and forming kind of parts of parts of groups. So um, yeah, that's interesting. You you, so computer science engineering. 
yeah. w- was the choice. What what made you decide on that path? Yeah, it was it was an interesting decision. It and it probably stemmed from crossing things out rather than ruling things in. <laughs> it, it was okay. it was a bit more of a. Um, I didn't want to do medicine, and I didn't want to do anything related to the medical field. Um, yep. bit, bit queasy, uh, uh, so that struck that out. <laughs> uh, didn't want to do anything related to to law. Um, uh, I had a genuine interest in um, in uh, mathematics and and physics. So I think there was a bit of a I guess that puts me in the engineering category. Yeah. Um, uh, and so that's really the the, the, the decision that, that took me to, to engineering um, and computer science and, and computer systems because um, it kind of you know at, at that stage it was you know, bring, bringing all of that together with 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 computers hardware and software so yeah, okay. it was it, yeah that, that's probably how I got into engineering not not with a predetermined decision that you know I want to do engineering it's more like I, I don't want to do this I guess I'm that yeah okay so that's, that's interesting sometimes it is that that process of elimination as you say it's Kind of finding your, your passion or interest that's going to, I guess, carry you through that next stage of your 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 education. Yeah. Um, was there any, anyone else at that point in your life that was kind of influencing or, or kind of helping you make those decisions? Not not really. I mean, my my, my dad came from a, an engineering background, so my dad's an engineer. Yeah. Um, I, and and so I, I kind of looked at him. I didn't want to do his field, um, which was um, yeah, I guess you know, fluid mechanics, and it's not really something that was interesting interesting to me, but. Um, but but I did enjoy I, and I still do you know the, ma- the, ma- the mathematics parts of it and the problem solving aspects of it. So uh, to me, it was kind of like you know I kind of don't mind looking at what you're doing, my dad, and so you know using that as a as a mechanism. Yeah, okay. of, yeah. So a modern twist, maybe on it's that. a modern modern <laughs> yeah, twist, <laughs> absolutely. And did you have? A kind of career plan at that point was you were kind of coming going through university. I had absolutely no career plan. No, yeah. it was it was <laughs> you know um, in, we'll, we'll do engineering and 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 to be honest, even through the latter parts of of my degree, it was a little bit of where where is this actually going to take me? Um, I, I you know there's parts of parts of the you know, what I, what I learned um, which I um, which I enjoyed um, and parts of it which I just thought oh my god what what's the practical use of this in in the real world? Yeah. Um, and, and so yeah, I, I guess. It was a you know, as I came to the you know, the final year of, of university. It was uh, I know I don't want to do this part, right? Yeah. I guess I want to kind of do this part, which is which is, um, yeah, which which is probably the reason why I, even the beginning of my my career was very, very little, if anything, about engineering. But using the yeah. problem solving skills of engineering and consulting is is where I you know, started my career. Yeah, got it. And, and actually, that was a question I was going to ask, which is. You kind of out of university, you worked for Accenture for three and a half years, yeah. and then Infosys for three years. Yeah. Um, so, what is it that kind of drew you into that kind of world of consulting at that point? Yeah, I, I it was. Uh, it, it, so, so I think it was. It was really interesting for me about. Um, I didn't really enjoy too much of the the signal processing and the and the hardware uh, aspects of of, of the role. Um, but but what drew me to it, uh, consulting was you know, the opportunity to kind of work on different different clients work within different you know kind of technologies and you know kind of doing something different uh, at any particular time I remember um, talking to a a, a a friend of mine a, 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 a guy that you know we grew up with as kids back in Adelaide yeah. um, and uh, he was working in Anderson consulting which was Accenture oh, yeah. at the time yeah. right and I gave him a call and I said hey um, there's an opportunity uh, or they're, 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 they're kind of looking for, for graduates and what do you think and he was one, uh, two years ahead of me, and it's like, man, it's a great place to be. I mean, consulting is the place. But trust me, you'll never see me. This organization's huge, right? <laughs> so um, don't don't join because of me, but um, join because of, of the opportunities. Yeah. And so th- that that was, you know, that 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 influenced me to kind of take that on. Um, uh, lo and behold, he was completely wrong. We weren't just in the same office. We were on the same team, <laughs> yeah. sitting at the same desk, yeah, right. uh, and that was that was not out of design. It was just out of you know placement uh, that we ended yeah. up working very close with each other in the first couple of years of, of career. But um, yeah, the, the reason for for joining um, consulting and, and specifically Accenture was just around the opportunities of of of, of working in in different in, in different clients, yeah, different okay. kind of you know, you know tool sets and methodologies, and kind of using that to scale up. Yeah. Okay. What do you think that kind of taught you about broader industry? Uh, as you say through that, I think a lot of people I, I see do go in consulting for that reason. Yeah. They kind of broaden their knowledge and their expertise and, and and what they're doing. But what what did you kind of take away from that that you've kind of since applied in your career? Oh, it's I, it's, uh, it's it it it. 
I would recommend um, consulting to, to almost any graduate. I mean, you, the, the amount of exposure that you get, um, it's, it's very rare to kind of get in, in most other industries, I, I, I would think. You're kind of thrown into the deep end, right? Um, there's a little bit of um, sink or swim. Um, yep. you know, there's, you know, you're surrounded by, by peers who are, who are all kind of running at the, at the same, same pace. Um, and so you're kind of keeping up with each other. Um, yep. You kind of understand how the, the business of, of consulting works, right? Yep. And, it, and, and, uh, and it's more than just the, the job at hand. And, and, and so there's, there's a broader piece that, that consulting kind of teaches you, um, kind of teaches you, you know, different skill sets, how to interact with clients, how to interact with, 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 with staff internally, your peer groups. So there's, there's a lot that, that you learn. Um, yeah. And to me, that's, that's definitely shaped me. And it's, I, I still say that consulting is in my blood. Um, I, I can't get it out of the system. Yeah. Um, and, and I'd probably argue that most of the, my, m- most of my peers, um, who, who who I joined with, yeah, it would still be in their system as well. You you can't you can't shake it out. So. Yeah, like absolutely. I think you know it's interesting when people come from a kind of academic and then into the world of work. Yeah, it's a transition. Yeah, you know, and it's a, there's a reality to work and uh, I guess the productivity and expectations of being at work as well. And I yeah. think you're right. I think you know that broad based uh, exposure that you get in consulting shows you what it looks like. Absolutely. Um, was there any particular industry or, or project that you were kind of gravitated towards, um, you know, through through that work you did in consulting? Yeah, I, I mean, it was not that I gravitated towards, but I guess you know, when when you're very early in your career, you you kind of you know you you're you're anointed, you're you're selected, yeah. right? So, um, I was you know some of that technology and the software that 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 I that I was doing back in the day that that doesn't even exist those roles and that software doesn't yeah. even exist anymore um, you know but but there was you know, a, a large part of what I was doing um, was related to um, infrastructure and, and environments and and and, and things were, that are now you know cloud based and SaaS based yep. solutions now <laughs> but you know they, they weren't cloud and SaaS back then and and so yes. there was you know there's a whole bunch of tasks and and, and work that needed to be done around uh, and around that and yeah, that's that's where I found myself, and 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 I actually enjoyed uh, enjoyed that part of yeah. my, my career, and so I, yeah, that's the the kind of roles that I was put on, um, you know, through my early times in, in in Accenture and 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 even moving into in, into Infosys. Yeah, and, and actually, that's that's again something else I was keen to explore with you is, you know, when you look in from the outside into the worlds of consulting, you see the big brands, right, yeah. Accentures and Infosys and so forth, but they're all fundamentally different flavors of organization. Um, how would you kind of describe the difference between between say Accenture and Infosys on based on your experience? So 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 when I joined Accenture, it, it, it was Anderson Consulting, and it just became Accenture at the time. So it kind of shows a little bit of my age. Um, but um, uh, it, it was a machine. It was a well-oiled machine, right? Yeah. I mean, it, 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 and I think there there was a a saying. There was a, a, an Anderson Android. Uh, they they build you right. up in a certain way, and and everyone is is almost the same, right? So you can yeah. almost be deployed to any location. Um, and 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 you just know what to do. You've got your handbook and and you run right. And and that was Accenture time. And I, I assume it still remains the same, right? Yeah. As is some of the other uh, consulting companies. Um, and then I I flick over through to to Infosys, which you know um, back in the day when I joined, I, I was employee number ten maybe yeah, wow. of 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 Infosys in Australia, right? Yeah. So they did just acquire made an acquisition of a, of a company here. Um, you know, they've they had a a twenty thousand um, person footprint back in back in India, um, yeah. an acquisition over here, and, and and you know they needed some some lo- local staff, and and I was employee number ten, um, and and you know it doesn't. I mean, obviously the the brand is is, is much bigger now, but you know it, the brand was much much more infant back in the day, um, and so those handbooks didn't exist, right? Yeah. The rule books didn't exist, the playbooks didn't exist. So so you you kind of like oh I I, I, w- I was used to. I was used to certain things, and and I and I'm and I got to kind of reinvent that, and mm. almost to an extent bring some of that from from my past over over to my new world. So that's interesting. But the the people you're working with, they had they also all come from Accenture, or they come from a blend of different organisations? Yeah. So um, so uh, when in in Infosys, it was um, it was you know, a couple of people that were that were from consulting, um, yeah. a couple of people that were from uh, product. Uh, yeah, right. And and uh, they they had won um, emphasis at the time had won a pretty pretty big deal um, on on a particular product set so yep. yeah people with that specific and again that product doesn't exist in the market anymore <laughs> big at the time um, yep. uh, but you know it uh, and, and so it was you know, a 
couple of people that had that experience as well that was brought in and, and that was became the, the fledgling of, of, of Infosys yeah, right. Australia along with the acquisitions that they made. Cra- crazy, this is almost like a startup concept to a certain degree, it's not quite, but yeah. it, essentially it sounds like you're building the operating procedures and the models and the and everything there pretty much from scratch. Yeah, it, it, you, you, the the models and the procedures existed for um, Infosys back in back in it, yep. you know back, back in India, uh, and they probably had that for you know, their clients uh, in US and UK. But in, in Australia, it was <coughs> it was kind of like, well, you know, we've got some people that are seconded, we've got this acquisition, we've got a couple of new people, and we're now kind of building it up as we go. Yeah. And I saw in that role emphasis your your role was described as enterprise solutions. Yeah. So was that more commercially focused in terms of working with with, with the customer? Yeah. So so the the concept there was um, you know it, at that stage um, emphasis was very, very much focused. Or well, this this part of emphasis was focused on packaged applications. So you know, you know things like Oracle, things like you know SAP. Um, yeah, you know, Siebel, which was kind of my my kind of experience in CRM, and so that was kind of their experience. So, so, so that so that role was in and around taking these you know, ap- applications um, and and taking them to market. Um, you know, from a from a um, solution solution design architecture yeah. perspective. So. Yeah. Okay. And when you when you kind of moved on from Infosys, you you went to ANZ. Yeah. So another large enterprise yeah. organization. Um, what what uh, what made you pick ANZ? I think it was, f- f- it was instilled in me probably earlier, and, and it's my my decisions have changed over the years quite significantly. Um, just about you know um, the size of a, a, an organization and and the opportunities um, that that it opens up. So, um, and that those. Those kind of you know decisions have changed heavily changed over the years, but yeah, you know, to me, you know, Accenture was a certain size, and yeah. meant that I, I had the opportunity to kind of you know um, dabble in and, and work in in certain places, and so did emphasis and and, and ANZ kind of o- 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 you know, yeah, at the time was a you know, big big enough organization. I, I didn't want to travel as much, and I did a fair bit of travel, so I didn't want to travel as much. This yeah. will kind of lead, you know put, put me. Put 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 me put me in Melbourne for a little while, um, yeah. and so so ANZ and and it was actually my first time jumping into a contract role um, after two right. two two straight two straight kind of you know roles of of being a a, a permanent employee in a consulting firm. Um, yeah. It was my first first entry into 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 contracting. Yeah, right. Okay, so that's interesting. Um, I didn't realize that. Uh, so what 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 kind of gave you the courage to go contracting, so to speak? Yeah, I, I mean, it, to be honest, it, it, a, ANZ started the, the contracting journey and was only until recently now, my current role, that, 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 that everything else has been a contract. Yeah, right, um, okay. And, and, and so, um, it, and and this is this is this is the the um, the Accenture or the consulting in me, which is, yeah. you know, I, I saw what consulting companies were doing, right? Yeah. Uh, and like, okay, so that's at a, at a very big scale. But, but how can I do that on my own and, yeah. and take all of those elements of, of, a, of, a, of a consultant and, and kind of consolidate it, right? And, yeah. and so, so, so I thought, I think I can do this, right? I, I, think, I think I know the source, right? Yeah. Uh, and, 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 and ANZ, uh, an, an opportunity opened up and, yeah. and, and that kind of was, was the start of, you know, what was, what's been probably 15, 15 odd years in, yeah, right. you know, in contracting really, but, but for very, you know, probably a handful of companies. A- a- any sleepless nights? Oh, it's no, I it, not not necessarily. I, I um there's there's this there's this I, I look at contracting very differently I, and at times people you know people have asked me or have told me you know, you're a permanent contractor, right? Yeah. Um and, and I think it's just the way in which I, I kind of address the you know, the the workplace. It's, I've always thought of um, I've never considered contract as as yeah, I'm gonna be there for this small period of time. Yeah. Um which is I, I guess not how you typically address uh, being a contractor? You're kind yeah. of there. To, uh, uh, yeah, the contractors are there thinking, well, that's my you know, six months or my nine months or my twelve months. Yeah. Um, but I, I, I've always gone gone into a contract thinking I'm, I'm here over the horizon, and you tell me that I'm not right, even yeah. though my contract tells me that, that it is. I bet you tell me that I'm not, and I'll and I behave and act as yeah. though I'm, I'm I'm here over the horizon. And I think that's why you know uh, ANZ was like six seven years maybe. And, yeah, uh, uh, yes, yeah, what I got here, I think seven years. Yeah. I think. Do you, do, do you think? Um, sorry, this is you got me on topic now. Yeah, uh, I d- actually, I did my master's thesis was on the lived experience of being a professional contractor. Oh, there we go. Um, so we could talk about this. Oh, this, is probably, is this is definitely a different <laughs> podcast. But um, do you think it keeps you more honest being a contractor? I I think um, 
the way, so so two school, uh, multiple schools of thought as a contractor, right? Yeah. Yeah, I, I'm, I'm here, um, I'm a hired gun, I'm here to do my role, yeah. right? and I'll do that really well, right? So I think that there's there's one school of thought around that, right? Um, and there's nothing wrong with that, and I think that that's successful, right? My school of thought is you've got a gap, right? Yeah. I, I'm here to fill a gap, but there are gaps everywhere, and every yeah. every industry has got gaps, right? And so my school of thought is I'm here to fill the gap. I'm guaranteed I'll fill that gap for you, right? But here are all the other gaps, and I think I can help out with that too, right? Yeah. Which is which is which is why I ended up, I guess, going from uh, what was probably a I think a nine month initial contract, um, yeah, to a seven year and another <laughs> year and another six months, and you're on the list. We have to, you know, we have to end you at this period of time. Sure, but then you find a gap, and then someone is like, okay, well, I guess. We need that guy. Though. Look, I think there's. A, it's interesting that in my experience, there's a difference between the kind of what I call the accidental contractor, mm. um, that's maybe between jobs and just does this to make ends meet. Yeah. Um, and I think they're always looking for a permanent job. Yeah. Or they're always looking at the end date as a, it's a finite piece of work. Yeah. And then I think there's the the kind of professional contractors that decide, no, I'm going to do this, and I'm going to market myself. I'm going to upskill, skill, look for opportunity, etc. And I think when I'm when I'm talking with people in the market that are kind of considering it as an option, that's the conversation I have. Yeah. You know, is this kind of just circumstance, or is this something you're kind of committed and mindfully going to go and go and do? Because if you do, you can make a great career mm. and be very successful, and probably get much more flexibility and choice about the stuff you do as well. So, I think there's big there's big pros and cons. Um, but uh, yeah, you surprised me. I didn't realize yeah. again. And and again, it's interesting when you look at your profile. It it, it doesn't obviously stand out that you were a contractor because of the amount of time you've spent places. Yeah, and, 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 and it's interesting. In in a in number of different contracts, I've, I've you know, had, had the luxury of you know, even leading teams and managing managing yeah. teams, managing permanent staff, managing contract staff. Um, and, and that's yeah, that's probably me wearing the hat of, you know, I, I don't tr- treat myself as a contractor. I'm yeah. happy to be treated as a contractor, but I don't treat myself as a contractor and I don't want to treat you know, other staff as, as contractors. So there's, there's almost this, you know, um, you know we're, we're here to kind of, you know, do, do a job and, and do something for our, our customer. And this is, comes back to my, my consulting days, right? Yeah. So, so that's, that's where, you know, that, that's what yes. I've learned from, from my early days, I guess. Yeah, that's great. Well, I'm going to move off topic because we, we're going to be here all day sure. on this one. But um, what I'm interested in is what difference did you experience when you moved from low consulting into industry in terms of the kind of mechanics of, 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 of life or work? Yeah, a, 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 a fair bit. I mean, you're, you're kind of used to um, certain processes and, and, and guidelines and checkbooks and you kind of know the the rule book um, from from a consulting perspective, be it on you know, different clients and different products. But you kind of know what to expect. And you know, moving moving into industry, you know, it, it is it is very different. You know, yep. here's here's kind of your here's the task, here's the role. Um, and, and so that kind of you know it, it was a bit of a a, a shift for me. Um, yep. And 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 also. Um, it is you know you're you're here for a specific kind of you know project or or, or a function. Yeah. Um, I guess I, I in in the end I, I ended up you know, kind of using it to my to my strength, which is well this is the project that I'm in, but you know here's the other projects that I can also be part of, and yeah. I kind of expanded expanded out in in that aspect. But yeah, yeah, great. And you know ANZ, Infosys, Accenture. I mean that's a pretty impressive lineup, <laughs> um, and some great organisations. Was there anyone in those organisations that was kind of mentoring you through that part of your career and, and kind of helping you develop? Uh, fun, funnily enough, not not really, not yeah. really. And I, I, I'm and probably because uh, especially my my um, ANZ days uh, and subsequently up as a, as a contractor, you don't necessarily have a mentor per se. So I never never really had a, a mentor and I did, and I did have one in, in my in my consulting time but I think he checked in with me probably once a you know one, once a year <laughs> because it to tick to, to, to tick the box and that's also kind of stuck with me about you know what what you know what not to do right sort of thing yeah. right but um yeah, but but so I, I've never really had mentors per se but but I've always had people that I look at the way they operate and and kind of oh, you do that really well 
Mm. Right, I like that, right? And how do I you know, take that and that? No, no. Oh, that person's really taken that and, 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 and you know, that's the storytelling. I, I gotta do that, yeah. right? That's the art of putting a PowerPoint presentation to be, and that's the art of you know, na- na- narrating you know, financials. So, so it's, it's taking all of those things yeah. that you see from different people and there's no one individual per se, yeah. um, but, the, but the mix of everybody else is kind of, I guess you, know, you take that in and, uh, and absorb that and kind of shape that. Yeah, so like, uh, like a patchwork quilt, it's patchwork. Or, or Frankenstein's monster. You, you kind of pick what you want, but well, the, the best of all worlds. Like yeah, right. <laughs> just what you the vicarious learning, correct? Of just being around and watching, and, and I think that is critical. I think that does shape a lot of careers. Is keeping your eyes open to people that excel, yeah, uh, and in certain situations, you know, really perform or really deliver. And trying to understand, well, what what are they doing? Yeah, and how do I how do I take something from that? Yeah, I I, I remember kind of sitting in certain meetings and just watching certain individuals just yeah you know, take take a conversation and 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 yeah you know, take it down a certain path to get the outcome that they need. I'm like, oh, that 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 skill, right? Yeah, yeah. and I knew it was going to go to to somewhere else, but but they they brought it to to point, right? And I'm like, okay, that you're going to hone in on that, and, yeah. and so you kind of listen in on how they kind of you know operate, yeah, and take that back in. Okay. Put that, put that in my, put, put that in my arsenal. Now. <laughs> put that in the toolkit. Yeah, yeah. yeah, that's right. Um, so after, after, yeah, seven years there with ANZ, yeah, um, you, you kind of left. So you've been in banking, you've been in consulting, yeah, and then you do a complete left turn and you go into government. Government, right? And you get a big roads. Yeah. <laughs> so yeah. How, how was that? Service, service, service to government um, was yeah. probably even the last several odd, odd years of my life. Um, I, I think what. It, that that was a bit of a yeah. It, it was I ready to to move into government uh, yep. uh, kind of question. Um, what what kind of attracted me though was was the opportunity. It was this you know, um, at that stage Vic Roads, which is very early days of kind of you know, a digital footprint. Majority of, of what they yep. had was 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 you know um, paper based and manual based and and this opportunity of of you know, taking a a, 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 a prominent um, mm-hmm. uh, business and. And and converting them into something that's more contemporary and and, yeah. and digital. So it's it was, is this opportunity? And I thought I, th- I think I can do this. Um, it was, there was a cultural shock, right? Uh, yeah. mov- moving from one place, uh, one uh, yeah, consulting to, to banking, but a bigger cultural shock m- moving to, to government. Um, but I'd like to think I I settled in, pr- pretty quickly. Um, yeah. And and you kind of understand very quickly um, the machinery. Of, uh, yeah. of government, right? Um, you know the, the processes and the yeah. and, 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 and and the pace and and, the, and how, how you how you maneuver. And I think I, I use that um, to, to, to 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 my strength a little bit. Um, yeah. Uh, look, I think um, my experience of, of meeting with people that have worked in, in both sectors is um, it takes a different type of attitude to get things done in government. Yeah. Um, and a different type of maybe personality. Mm. Um, I mean, is that something you experienced? Yeah, I, I, I think so. I mean, I, the, the the passion still exists, yeah. right? So, so no, no matter which industry um, you're in, the, the passion still exists, um, and and and, and everyone, everyone, you know, for the most part, is is there trying to trying to you know do, doing the right thing and, and hitting in the right way. It, the, there are processes in place. There are governance. Yeah. And it's just checkboxes in place. There are um, you know, it's uh, there are certain things that you you can and uh, you, you can and can't do for the for the right reason, right? Um, but then you kind of use that to kind of shape, um, and, and then you know kind of use that to then I guess um, not 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 just deliver your work, but but you know almost plan. Yeah, 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 yeah. As a project manager, as a plan your projects, plan your delivery. So, yeah. yeah. And I saw um, after five years, so again another decent stint yeah. as a contractor. As a contractor. As a contractor as again. A contractor. Uh, you moved to the Envirom- Environmental Protection Agency. Uh, yeah, absolutely. Um, another government role. Uh, correct. Um, and well, then I saw as kind of as COVID was taking effect, you you were doing some work as an advisor to Serco. Yeah. In journal technologies as well, and involved in that business. Yeah. So what was kind of going on at that that time in your your life and your career? So uh, I, I think uh, as as I kind of exited um, Rhodes and kind of exited um, EPA, uh, I, I got this. You know, I've, I've, I've I've got I think I've got the source for for contracting right, yeah. um, and, and I've come to a point where I've I've not, not just delivered projects but you know, the the strategy behind it. Um, I've, I've got to you know, I'd like to think I've. I've I can piece things together, or at least bring people together to help piece things together. Um, and, and so, you know, this this uh, almost this advisory kind of uh, ro- role um, is is where I kind of shifted into. Um, also, gave me a little bit more 
um, flexibility um, in, in life. So it gave me a bit, bit more time back, um, but it was a bit more advisory. Um, yes, specifically, um, uh, you know, kind of piecing together, you know, complex technical um, yep. solutions, large scale digital transformation. So that's kind of where, where my where my passion and 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 and, and last lots of lots of experience was on. So you know, pr- providing advisory and services around around that. So you know, and I was okay um, with you know getting a little bit of time back into into my calendar. Um, yep. You know, f- focus on things other, other than other than work for a little while. Um, yeah, yeah, absolutely. And again, what's kind of coming through from your career to this point is you enjoy the bigger picture. Absolutely. Thinking and p- say piecing things together and making things happen rather than necessarily being under the hood. Yeah. Um, so to speak. Yeah, yeah. yeah. I, I, I um, yeah, c- kind of you know, ch- challenge, challenging, asking the right questions, challenging, and then you know, using using the curiosity and you know, equal pe- people's curiosity to kind of then yeah. you know, trying to try solve solve the bigger picture problems. So. Yeah, great. And you mentioned there about getting that kind of bit of time back and a bit of flexibility. Um, something I really liked about your, your profile and really admired was, uh, was I saw they had the career break yeah. uh, with the family. Uh, and I think you went back to India. Yeah, is that yeah. right? So, um, what, what, what was what was that about? So, so uh, we're a bit late to the to, to the parenting game. So, uh, yeah. my, my kids you know, now three, but you know, at at that stage he was uh, two. Um, yeah. And so I I, I did want to spend more time um, uh, with with our little guy. Um, yeah. And you know what better way um, to kind of immerse him into a culture than take him directly into into India? So we spent uh, almost four and a half months. And kind of uh, in India, just stopped stopped all, all of my work, and, and I thought, you know what, just you know, we'll we'll figure it out at the tail end, and we'll we'll go there, um, and you know, just w- watching a two and a half year old, you know, experience cows on the street and touching a, a elephant, and you know, yeah. just you know, noise and 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 the color of of of, of India, um, and so you know, so so he got to do that. I got to see him yeah, kind wonderful. of kind of do that, and. Um, I wasn't really planning on yeah get, getting in getting back into work at that stage, but you know, a few telephones f- phone calls came in, and you know, next thing I know, I'm straight straight back straight into back it. straight back into <laughs> it. How did you feel stepping back for a period of time? Uh, I, I mean, I've I, I mean, I've had the luxury of taking kind of big big time off um, through 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 my career. So okay. you know, I've I've had you know big three months off and two months off and a year, six six weeks off here and there and and, and you know they kind of added to, to my travel um, and I've got yeah. a big travel bug so yeah uh, so 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 yeah I- any opportunity to to kind of you know do some global travel and, and immerse myself in in other cultures I'll, I'll take um, or I could anyway before the kid um, <laughs> uh, but but you know this was this was that opportunity to you know mm. just completely switch off and, and I literally you know there was no emails no um, no, no, no tele. I mean, switch off the telephone. Um, yeah. I, I spent four and a half months. Actually, didn't even have a TV. So, um, I wanted to specifically, you know, di- di- digitally detox for a little while. So, yeah, fantastic. Because I think some people, you know, they feel quite daunted. They love the idea of a, a kind of sabbatical, mm. if, if you want to call it that, or career break. Um, what anyway? What advice if someone was thinking about it? And let's say they've made the commitment, right? So the you know, apart from the advice of just do it. Yeah. <laughs> um, how how do they set that up for success to make sure that they really get the most from the experience? Yeah, that if, I mean, step one is make sure that you know, um, you know, financially you're in the right position to be able to uh, to, to do that. You you don't want to be yeah. you know, taking a sabbatical <laughs> with the back of your mind thinking I've I've got to you know pay this or I've got to do that. So yeah, yeah make make sure that yeah you, you, your your mind is clear. Um, but then depending on what 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 you do in your sabbatical, um, immerse yourself um, in it yeah. right, maximize it. Don't don't be thinking about work. You know, just just re- really really capitalize, and I think you know um, whether it was the, the the four four and a half months that that I had you know with, with my kid in in, yeah. in India, or you know, you know previous ones where we've just had you know you know two months or three months off traveling, right? Yeah. It literally was this this, this is it. Th- yeah, th- yeah. This is my calling for the time, and I'm, I would really enjoy doing that. Um, yeah, thank you. I think again, that's good advice. Right? As I say, I, I think I talk to people, and they're often kind of facing it, or they they've maybe been made redundant. And they want to take a, a, a sabbatical. Um, don't be afraid. But don't yeah. be afraid. Don't that's be afraid. Right. Uh, I mean, and 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 yeah, I think um, if if you've got the right kind of kind of attitude t- towards work, um, 
yeah, you can always come back to work. I, I, yeah, I mean, I maybe touch wood, I've, I've been lucky in, in that sense. Um, yeah, but but uh, if 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 you've got if you if you've got the right um, tools and 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 skill sets, you know those tools and skill sets can can always be used when when yeah, you when you're back. Yeah, absolutely. And again, as you as you touched on there, actually, uh, it's another it's another positive being a contractor. Yeah, is is often you know you work hard, you will have a two or three month break. You can kind of punctuate your work, and it's probably more acceptable for want of a better word, um, or widely accepted. It's probably a better word for phrase of phrase phrase to use, but. Um, but following that break, then I can see that you did some freelance work, and yep. then you've you've last year you joined Oricam. Yes, um, I'm sure you must have had a, a wealth of opportunities. What what? But what specifically drew you to the opportunity here with with uh, with Oricam? Well, I- in initially there was a bit of a um, is is this is this the right opportunity? And this was before Oricam was was called Oricam, um, yeah. and Oricam was a. Uh, it, it was the bringing together of, of, of two businesses, a carve out of one and a, and a merger of another. Um, and, and the initial question I had to myself is, well, um, is, this the, is this the right op- opportunity in, in the yep. first instance? Um, just a just, you know, relatively small company compared yep. to you know, what I've done in the past, right? a very small company compared mm. to what I've done in the past. Um, and, and then I spent some time researching you know, the, 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 the two businesses um, uh, the private equity partner that that you know, that, that, sit, that sit on top of us and and realize that you know what th- there's actually something here right uh, and 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 obviously that you know, our, our investors have invested in in this business for a reason uh, and I could see uh, I, I could see something so yeah. um yeah, hen- hence you know the the shift back into you know what I'll, I'll make a commitment uh, this yeah. is, so so this is me now 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 committing um <laughs> yeah off the ABN and onto the books great and what's your what what are your kind of hopes and dreams you know what's your aspirations at Oricam? what what are you hoping to achieve yeah, I mean, I I thoroughly enjoy you know what I'm what I'm doing at work, and 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 I like the the you know the what I see amongst the team as well. It's this glimmer in the eye of you know there, there's something here, and I think we're yeah. very uniquely placed. I mean, we bring hardware and and software and and services unique to to the industry. I think, um, and, and we've got this opportunity again where um, we've we've kind of you know. Uh, we've leapfrogged all these other you know, technologies and 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 whatnot in in the middle ground, and and we're able to kind of jump straight into you know the latest tech at the moment. So yep. you know, it's this opportunity of 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 you know using what what is uh, latest tech to solve you know real world problems and 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 you know provide solutions for our customers. So yeah, yeah. fantastic. So I'm going to ask you now um, to think a bit more broadly about your career. Okay. Um, uh, if if you were to kind of look back over the journey you've had, are there any kind of career regrets you've got? I I, I can't say I have any career regrets. Um, I, I I kind of take every moment as kind of life lessons and and learnings, right? Um, and, and that's just helped shape um, who who I am. I I I distinctly remember very early on in my career, I had this opportunity to kind of present what's been like two months worth of my work um, to, to a, a general manager in, in the business and several layers above me. I'm like, oh, this is a great opportunity. So I go into to, to the guy's office uh, along with um, my, my manager at the time. And like, I'm presenting this um, expenditure profile. Um, he flips directly to the end of a 20 page PowerPoint presentation and goes, that's far more than what we've got. And so I take him back. I'm like, let me just take you on the journey. And I've spent the next hour kind of you know, taking him on the journey and seeing him disengaged throughout. And you anyway, know, at the end of the conversation, he's like, now that you wasted all of my time, I told you in the beginning that you know. Um, <laughs> and I'm like, I take myself back, and and then um, and, and and that's a life lesson. That's not that's not a that's not a regret, but that's that's kind of like okay. So there's there's the the art of storytelling. There's the art of narrative. There's the art of stakeholder engagement. So so all of those things that I realized, and this is very early in my career, right? Yeah. Uh, and like these are things that 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 you, you need to have. It's not just a solution. Your, your solution yeah. may may be right or maybe close, but that doesn't matter. You, it's how do you take people on the journey to ensure that they they understand where you've got to. Um, and so it, so yeah, there's there's almost all these little anecdotes throughout my career that I can think. I don't take them as 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 regrets, but you know, how they shaped who I am and how that's how I then use that to help you know, shape other uh, others you know, that that work 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 with me and work for me. So Yeah, great. Yeah. Look you sound like someone that's that's clearly, you know, taken those lessons 
uh, and, and really developed and evolved really from from those experiences and, and it's kind of shaped you in, into what you are today. Mm. Has there been a moment in your career where you've received sort of significant feedback that you can think of that's really shaped you? This is an interesting one. I, I guess, um, I, I don't know, maybe t 10, 10 years ago, 12 years ago, um, I remember a, a, a person, that was one of the guys that I used to work with, was, I really can't, I really can't do it with your emails. Right? Like, <laughs> what do you mean? He goes, oh, it's, it's riddled with, with spelling mistakes and grammatic errors. I'm like, what are you talking about? And then he points me back to a series of emails, and then I realize, oh, hang on a minute, I, he's right, right? So, so my emails, and you you can follow it, but there are large parts of stuff that's missing. Yeah. What's this about, right? And then I go back into kind of deeply analyzing mm. what's going on here, um, and then you start to piece other parts of your life together. And it wasn't until that stage that I wasn't aware that I, I've got ADHD. Right. Yeah. Right. And and, and so it's it, uh, you know, not that it's ever stopped me in mm. in in my career, mm. but or or in general in my life. But it, it was that point where someone stopped to tell me, "What about this?" That it made me question everything else. And now I'm, you know, I kind of, you know, I, I kind of, you know, I I know I've got it right, and yeah. so I'm acutely aware of it. And my wife still tells me. You know, <laughs> It's still left in the microwave, or you, you forgot that you half didn't. So I still hear about that, and and I make sure I read my emails about four times over. So yeah, because I'm thinking faster than I'm typing. Um, but but how that shaped me is is uh, I guess that's my kind of like my superpower, right? Yeah. I, I'm I'm able to kind of because uh, I'm thinking faster than I'm typing. I'm thinking faster, so so I'm kind kind of always thinking about five, six, seven things all, all at the one time. Um, so it's, it's, it's shaped me by, by giving me realization, if that makes sense. Yeah, that's really powerful. I think and it's very easy to kind of hear something like ADHD and think you know, that can be debilitating. Right? Yeah. But actually, you're right. There's a lot of strength that comes from uh, all the traits that come, yeah. come, come, come from that in terms of the, the, the other things that you can bring to the table as well. Um, and probably having that awareness of it. Yeah, it's it's it's, uh, it's my it's it's kind of like my, my 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 superpower. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I love that. God, that's that's really important. How um, did you thank the person for that feedback? Just that. Oh, I mean, I I, I tell Just I tell him all the time. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> we're, we're still we're still mates. Um, yeah. and he probably forgot that he uh, that he reminded me. But um, I it's, I remember like if it wasn't for you, I, I wouldn't have picked this out. And and you know, like I said, like, that that was the beginning of me kind of piecing all these other bits all mm. through. You know, even as uh, yeah, kind of. Oh, that's why university was like that, or, and that's why high school yeah. was like that. And yeah, yeah. There you go. Well, yeah. but thank you for sharing that. Yeah. Um, it, it was there. Has there been any role through your career that you'd say has kind of really pushed you outside your comfort zone? I I think all of my roles push me out of my comfort zone, but that's something that I do. Uh, so this yeah. is this is I, I think part of my the. The, what what I do for myself, which is um, you, as a contractor, especially you know, you're kind of hired um, for for a role. Um, but I've always thought, you know, that's that's what I'm hired for. That's my that's that, that's the that's the minimum expectation, right? But I want I, I should be doing the plus one and getting involved in the you know. So 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 I've always it's not that um, I, I guess the way I've kind of dealt with it is I I kind of push myself to take on a little bit more. Right, yeah. um, and 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 that's kind of shaped a how I've been able to stay at certain places mm -hmm. for, for longer, but but also how I've been able to kind of grow uh, as well. So yeah, that's pushed me out of my comfort zone. Look, and that and that growth thing as well is quite interesting. Yeah, um, in the sense of you know certainly my perception is as a as a contractor, the investment in your personal growth is probably more on your shoulders. Mm. than the organization you're, you're part of. Yeah. You know, you're not necessarily in some kind of talent development program or succession planning program. So how, how have you kind of sought ways through your career to, to upskill? Yeah, I, I think, I mean, in, in that example, just taking that example, um, it's, you know, it's involving yourself in, 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 a, in, in a committee or a group, right? So you know, if you're, a, if you're a, 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 a dev lead, right? Yeah. Just, and, and as a contractor and you're, uh, nominate yourself to be part of a design committee. Um, I'm, I'm sure no one's going to say no, even as a quiet observer, right? Um, 
uh, and then throw in some 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 useful kind of tidbits and and maybe that starts to open up some more doors and and that's kind of what what I kind of did in in through my early parts of the career which is as 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 yeah, as I'm doing my day job you know there there are always kind of gaps and you know, how do I how do I support you in there and how do I learn there and 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 so you know that then opens up you know almost tangential um, kind of areas and so you pick up those traits right and then yeah, you go okay. offline and start to you know read up on it or or, or, or um, kind of skill up you know, o- o- offline separately or pick people's brains and yeah you know, and then now all of a sudden you've just added more skill to, to the repertoire and then you know all these little you know you know, tangential um, kind of you know, skill sets and, and, and activities to just Build build your portfolio. Really. And do you think as well a byproduct of that is that you start to build a reputation for being a curious mind? Yeah, yeah. You you become a curious mind, um, and and you know, in a way because you're filling gaps, you're you've you've become the go to person mm-hmm. for some because no one was no one was doing that in the past, right? So yeah. you kind of become a go to person, um, and, and then you know the the best way around that is then you kind of just share that knowledge out so you've got other yeah. go-to people and then you can do the next plus one so so that's kind of the the, the the operating model I guess my personal operating model yeah and that's good look I think again it's, what's interesting when I when I kind of meet with people like yourself is that um, not in a contrived or, or overly conscious way but actually a, a pathway to success through their career has been their personal brand within the organization. Yeah. So not your Instagram yeah. presence, by the yeah. way, when I say personal yeah. brand, but um, sort of what you're known for. Yeah. You know, what people in the workplace look and say, you know, that guy there solves problems. Yeah. Or I can throw my biggest problem at that guy and he's yeah. gonna take it away and fix it. Um, would you say that's true? I'd say so. I mean, I think um, I, 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 if, the best way to probably describe me, or if, uh, I think probably other people would describe me, is is um, a change agent. So yeah. um, I'm I'm kind of always looking at if we do something this way, right? What would be what what would be the benefit um, if we did it slightly differently, right? Yeah. And and just constantly looking at how do we kind of you know change the way we operate to kind of you know create more efficiency or do it better or use technology or engage better. So so it's it's kind of like me kind of thinking change agent. Um, and and that kind of worked pr- really well in in you know, d- in the world of digital transformation, which I, you know, which I've been very much part of. So yeah, right. And again, leads back into your superpower, right? Yeah, please. Because be, you, yeah, you're, you're kind of constant thought of you know, how can we do things better or how can we do things different means you're not just happy with the status quo. Yeah, I think I, I think my mind just doesn't work like that. I think I get yeah. bored too quickly, so I has yeah. to be thinking about you know different things. And I, I guess you know. Pe- uh, Pe- people will will tell me we could you know slow down we're gonna, we're gonna kind of keep up right and we'll, <laughs> so yeah. yeah yeah that's great um you've 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 no doubt worked with and also hired a lot of people through through your career um if you're looking at kind of emerging tech talent or you're hiring people what what are the, the kind of key things you're looking for in uh in someone to stand out yeah um it, curiosity right I'm, yeah. I'm i'm looking for people um typically um who are curious who are hungry um, to kind of to, to, to take on more right um, yeah. I think you could, it's it's not about the technology or, or or the processes that that you might know I think you can you know, to an extent for the right people you can kind of learn the tech or you can yeah. learn processes right um, but the people that are, are interested in okay I, I'm, I'm I would like to get involved in you know, this this and this right so um, and and I guess my the, tip, the the way I typically operate is if, if you're hungry if you're curious I, I, I'll give you every opportunity in the world right I'll, I'll throw as much as you can and absorb it because that's helped me grow to who where I am and I want to give that back to, to to anyone who's equally curious so uh, at you know I, I've I've seen developers who are now program managers right and that's just them stepping up uh, okay well Okay, take on the lead role, take on the manager role, take on the designer role, and uh, and I've seen kind of you know I've helped uh, I'd like to think shape um, you know, I- individuals grow their career just because of their curiosity, right? Yeah, and it's yeah. very similar to my curiosity, I guess. Yeah, 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 I like it. If you were to to, to give some advice for then for someone that's like sage advice uh, yeah. that that are kind of coming up through their career, what, what would you advise them? Apart from be curious, <laughs> yeah, I, I, do, I, I think um, find the gaps and 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 take on the plus one, right? So yeah. um, I think that's been that's been key for me, which is um, there are gaps everywhere, um, and yeah. and and gaps means opportunity, right? And 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 so don't be afraid to to take on those th- those gaps and take on those opportunities if you if you know just enough about it, right? 
and there is a gap there, put your foot in it, right? Yeah. Open up, uh, o- open it up, and then kick the door open, and see where that takes you, right? And then that w- that's that would be my my recommendation, regardless of what what you're in. And and most people, I I do feel, um, are, are yeah are are interested in 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 taking on challenges, right? You know, we spend you know a third of our uh, our day at, at the minimum um, yeah. at work, so you know you want it to be challenging, you, you want it to be yeah, you, know, you want it to be interesting. So, um, yeah, I think create those opportunities. I'd say. Yeah. 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 Fantastic. Um, again, another, another trend that I kind of see in people that have been very successful is is they typically have some kind of habits or, yeah. or kind of routines that help them kind of be most productive and and get the best out of their time. Um, you know, what are the kind of secrets to behind your success? Ah, uh, I'm not. I I. I I don't know if I do it very well. Um, I, I'd like to think I manage my time, but but I'm not sure how. I, 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 so so you know, I've, I've got this routine of of, of making sure I, I clear my inbox. Um, you know, before before my day starts, I'm a, I'm an early riser. So you know, yep. by five five thirty, I'm I'm already up. Um, well. Yeah, you know, clear clear cleared the inbox as, as much as possible. Sent out a bunch of emails to to people, or at least scheduled scheduled email send outs um, yep. in the morning. And then the day starts, right? And, and then yeah, because the day is is literally back back to back meetings and yeah. uh, or, or, or or meeting people, providing advice and and sending some direction. And then by the time I, c- I come back, I've got an inbox full, right? So <laughs> yeah, and so and so the day begins the next day. So that's kind of you know, I think it's it's about um, you know, in order to be able to do do your work, you know, kind of clear clear off as much of the noise yeah. as possible. Um, and then you know, make sure you've got some sufficient time to kind of you know, you know, zone out and you know. You know Start with a, a, a clear mind the next morning. Yeah, great. That re-energize. Re-energize. Yeah, recharge. absolutely. I think that's, yeah. I think that's the po- the most important thing. Yes. Yeah. You can keep if you don't replenish. Yeah. You just you kind of get stuck in this rut. Yeah, and um, and you do you, you need you need um, small re- re-energize, um, and we're just th- the nightly right, um, and then you know there's 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 the bigger re-energize, which is you know yeah. the you know once a year or once every six months or whatever that is, and it's just got to get it out of my system. Right? Yeah. Now I'm back. Yeah. Yeah. Um, similar to you, actually, I love travel. Yeah. Um, where where would be top of your list if you were going to say to me you must go to this place? Where would you pick? Laos, in Southeast Asia. Okay. Laos in Southeast Asia. I uh, I didn't expect to enjoy Laos as as yeah. much as I did, uh, and I've travelled all through Southeast Asia, and then is this is uh, we went there, and it was just a, it was magical. It was magical. Yeah. It, it was it, it it felt like maybe Thailand from from 40 years ago maybe and yeah. it was just you know sat sat by the river um, just kind of just lazed back and, and it was amazing and and we we we, we landed there um, not not by plan just mm-hmm. by coincidence um, on, on on a day where almost everyone from all the towns would kind of Come together in in almost a ceremony or as a street parade, um, uh, and and we and I'm sitting in, in front of my in the hotel on in, in the front and just you know community after community just walking and celebrating in the street and I'm like this is this is what it's all about yeah. so yeah yeah amazing yeah, thank so, you yeah um, I always like to ask people as well what they read what they listen to yeah uh, do you read do you a reader. I, I don't I, I don't think I've got the um, the attention fan yeah. <laughs> to to read, but but I but I, I read a lot of I mean I'm I'm I, I'm on, I read a lot of news. I'm I'm a kind of a bit of a news junkie, right? So yeah, right. in in you know whether or not it's it's you know, uh, you know news online or or, mm. or, or you know, my my YouTube subscriptions or, or yeah. Spotify. So I'm constantly kind of listening to you know whether or not it's, you know politics uh, on on all sides yeah you know, what's happening in tech what's happening in finance so I'm, I'm kind of just absorbing uh, yeah, okay. news a lot and f- uh, probably dangerously <laughs> yeah okay so you, you, you quite like that kind of more the the more punchy content yeah say, it, it, in it real is. time yeah and and because uh, for me it's, it's I'd, I'd like to stay on top of okay what what is happening globally right what's happening yeah. at, at any point in time around the world what's you know, the macroeconomics that's uh, that's occurring what's happening in technology right now that I should yeah. be aware of how does that yeah in a way how does all of that kind of influence influence what I do right so yeah so I'm, I'm very much into into that yeah great Look, thanks for your time today. It's been really insightful. Uh, and thank you for sharing and some quite personal stuff as well. So thank you for sharing that. Um, yeah, cheers. Yeah, thank you. It's been a pleasure. Thank you. Thank you for listening to Tales from Tech Tysons. And be sure to follow us wherever you get your podcast. 
you'd like to get more insights about tech careers, then check out the Ember, that's e double M-B-R, LinkedIn page, for the latest updates, articles, and engaging discussions.